Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I've found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a short story that I read because it is Short Story Tuesday, and today's short story is all about a, uh, a wagon train that gets attacked by Indians in the Old West, uh, and the the guy who is supposed to protect that wagon train and what he does. I am referring to The Girl Who Got Rattled by Stuart Edward White, which was published in 1901. For those who don't know, Stuart Edward White was an American writer uh, who lived between the eight, late 1800s and the uh, mid-1900s. He was known for writing Western literature. Uh, he frequently interviewed people who were um, from or like who were alive during the Old West and turned their stories into into books. Uh, he probably, uh, you know, like fictionalized these stories a little bit, punched them up uh, in order to add more uh, pizzazz to them because not not every story in the Old West was necessarily, you know, exciting or whatnot. Sometimes it was just boring living on the the farm and not a lot going on. Um, but uh, a lot of people have, um, you know, praised Stuart Edward Wright for, White for his writings, uh, including, I, I believe, uh, Theodore Roosevelt, who also praised his hunting skills. Um, so that that's nice. He has, you know, presidential approval there. Uh, what's, what's interesting is that this short story was adapted into one of the vignettes or short films for The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. It's a uh, Coen Brothers uh, movie on Netflix uh, with a couple different um, short movie short stories adapted into uh, film all taking place in the Old West. Uh, and they're all pretty high quality. Um, I um, like. I really like the movie adaptation of the girl who got rattled, even if I'm, I'm not as big a fan. Spoiler of um, of the short story here, and then the other short stories were pretty. Um, the short stories in the film were, were good as well. I don't think I've read any of the other ones. Uh, but yeah, um, pretty interesting author, even if um, if their writing is, is not what I was looking for. Uh, but I'll talk about that in the analysis section. So without further ado, let's talk about The Girl Who Got Rattled. I will do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So The Girl Who Got Rattled focuses on Alfred, who is a bashful, very shy, but a highly skilled uh, sort of wagon leader, sort of... Um, uh, gun, gun for hire sort of protector of wagon trains. Uh, people, you know, they make fun of him, but they know that he is highly qualified and he can view the, or he can see the planes like nobody else can. And so, um, one of the, one of the people out West hires him to lead a, uh, a bunch of wagons, which includes his daughter to Deadwood. Uh, and, um, you know, he agrees to it and he, uh, hangs around Miss Caldwell, uh, who notices that Alfred is, is shy and bashful, but she pokes fun of, fun of him for it. And he, you know, he wanders about and tries to hide from her in order to, you know, prevent her from making him feel more shy and, and whatnot. And, uh, while, um, while he's, you know, away from her, he's looking at the ground. He's trying to see if anything, anything dangerous is coming up. He, he doesn't see any tent poles from, from teepees, but he does notice tracks, um, that are, that are, are formulated. And he figures that they, uh, the tracks must belong to, uh, some, some native, uh, warriors of some, of some kind, like the Sioux, uh, who are, um, are like because it's all bucks they're liable to do something stupid whereas if there were families and whatnot there they would be less likely to engage in violence uh and so um uh alfred goes and uh looks after the wagon train but it, it appears that miss caldwell and a friend have uh have sort of went off on their own uh, in, in an effort to explore more of of the plains uh and i believe that the um one of the men like goes back and um, you know, at, uh, but Miss Caldwell chooses to stay, and Alfred even yells at this man uh, and tells him, you know, like, what? Why were you doing? Proving again, like he can be forceful when he when he's needed. So uh, Alfred goes after Miss Caldwell, uh, and while he is talking to her, they find that they are being circled by by the Sioux warriors. 
who are uh, not answering their uh, their calls for peace. And so Alfred realizes that he's going to have to fight his way out, which he believes that he's uh, that he, that they're going to be able to do because the Sioux aren't ex- aren't as experienced with guns, uh, and uh, riding on horseback makes them less effective with those guns. Uh, but nevertheless, Alfred notes to uh, Miss Caldwell that he, that he has a pistol on him with two bullets in it, uh, one for uh, him and one for her if the Sioux are able to get um, get get the upper hand in the fight because they, otherwise they'll do something really terrible and, and make their death very painful rather than ending it quickly. Uh, and so Alfred proceeds to go and fight the the Sioux while uh, Elizabeth is is very nervous. She's rattled, if you will. Um, but Alfred ends up falling into a hole of some sort, which he which we find out is kind of intentional on his part as an effort to uh, distract the Sioux in some sort of way. And uh, when when he gets out of it, he looks back at Elizabeth and sees that she's put a bullet in her head because she didn't know that was intentional. And Alfred notes that. And then he kills the other three uh, remaining Sioux warriors in order to uh, end the battle there and then. And um, he um, adjusts the clothing on her body to make her look respectable. And he uh, returns back to the wagon train and it, it ends there. In terms of analysis, there is a little bit worth talking about with the girl who got rattled. Uh, Stuart Edward White presents us with a view of the West. Indeed, that is the, uh, the probably the major theme of this of this short story. Uh, he, he notes that the West can be boring and monotonous. Uh, not a lot goes on for uh, extended periods of time uh, and, and you know people have to wander about to, to entertain themselves and prevent them from uh, just becoming ultimately uh, bored out of their mind with this this sort of uh, this sort of travel. And keep in mind that this was you know 1800s and whatnot, so there wasn't exactly cell phones. There wasn't exactly any any exciting things to keep them busy while they were traveling on horse. Uh, there is a good quote that I would like to read to you from this. There's a great deal to recommend a plane's journey at first. Later, there is nothing at all to recommend it. It has the same monotony as a voyage at sea, only there is less living room, and instead of being carried, you must progress to a great extent by your own volition. Also, the food is coarse, the water poor, and you cannot bathe. And uh, um, uh, Edward White, or Stuart Edward White goes on to talk about how to a plainsman, you know, outdoor life might be great, but to a, you know, a woman who might be wedded to the idea of civilization and whatnot, it can be uh, pretty boring and there's ten- there's a tendency to wander off, um, as, as, I've, as I've noted. Uh, and I, I feel like that's a really good quote because, you know, a lot of people t- typically, uh, you know, glorify the West in a lot of ways. They say, oh, it's rugged adventure. But, you know, so here's Stuart Edward White saying, you know, it can be pretty boring uh, and, you know, it, there's there's not a whole lot there. Uh, but um, but he also points out that there are brief periods of violence. Uh, Alfred is not new to this. You know, we see that in the story, but it's it's clear that for Edward, this has happened a couple times before. Where in addition to all of this, this nothing, you have the you have the constant worry about being attacked by natives. Um, and you have the constant worry of, of, of dying. Like he even specifically says that he has a, bu- a gun with two bullets in it uh, for moments like uh, like when the Sioux attack, which uh, would indicate that he's he's gone through this this before, that uh, this happens frequently enough that it's something he needs to worry about there. And you see, he doesn't want to end up like the many people who have been slowly killed by the, by the natives uh, who are trying to teach a lesson or or just want to be ruthless um, in, in some sort of way. Uh, and what's what's also interesting is Miss Caldwell, she dies at the end of the story and her death is kind of treated like a fact of the West. Like uh, Alfred sees her dead body and he's like, that's unfortunate. And then he goes and goes back to the wagon train. And you could argue that this is, you know, um, uh, like Stuart Edward White kind of glossing over this death. But I think more realistically, it's just like, this is something that Alfred has seen before. Death is a fact of, of the Old West. Uh, there's nothing you can do to get around it. And he's just got to, um, he's you, you just got to move on. You can't let that interfere with the other things you have to do uh, and uh, the other people that you have to um, help get to Deadwood in, in this story. So it is unfortunate that Miss Caldwell dies, but 
and there are plenty of others who have died similarly, which is which is a pretty sad uh, bit of, of writing there. Stuart Edward White also briefly touches on the idea of masculinity in this story, because Alfred is shy except until it matters. He's described as shy, indecisive, uh, short um, of all things, and uh, just like he doesn't, uh, like people make fun of him and whatnot. But there are times when it matters, when he can be forceful in his conversation. He chews people out when it's necessary. And he's a great gunslinger. So he's, he can protect people who are uh, around him. Uh, he is, um, he's the rugged man of the West, the, the typical view of the, of the, of the man of the West who is, is uh, quiet but effective in, in what he does. And you can also view, see how he views masculinity in comparison to uh, how he talks about women in this story, particularly noting that Miss Caldwell is ineffective, that she's a woman, so she has no idea how to gunfight, uh, that women in general are, uh, are not, um, uh, don't have the disposition to live out west, whereas men, you know, they're built for it. So uh, Stuart Edward White is, is contributing to what a lot of people were doing at the time and presenting the west as a lawless um, sort of uh, kind of boring, but ultimately, um, ultimately, you know, um, kind of tough place to live where only men can do it. Uh, it's, it's kind of a little bit of, of sexist writing there. Um, that uh, that portrays masculinity as the only thing that can really tough out or make it through these these rough situations in the West. The major things that I don't like about uh, about the girl who got rattled is, of course, the sexism, which I just described. Um, it, it's weird how Stuart Edward White goes out of his way to, you know, stop the story and say women are weak and ineffective and uh, they're nowhere near as, as competent as men. It's, it's Yeah, he just stops the story there. And then he further does that to add in a little bit of racism, particularly uh, towards natives in this story, creating the mythos that, you know, natives attacked wagon trains all the time. And they, they were savages, they were uh, rough, and um, they they weren't particularly effective with, with their weapons, so they were kind of easy to kill at times unless they, they came at you in, in great numbers. Again, like, I wouldn't say anything about this if he didn't stop the story and, and just shout it at you. Like, he really wants you to get this message, as other writers did at the time. He's, he's very, this is very much a product of of the times, because uh, you, you got to present, you got you got to have a villain for the old west, and what better villain than uh, the people that we seemingly defeated um, in order to claim the old west? It's um, it's it's it, it, it ultimately kind of hurts the story a little bit because. Uh, there's there's good writing there, but you have to get around the, the racism and sexism to get there. Anyway, those are my thoughts on The Girl Who Got Rattled by Stuart Edward White. Um, an okay short story, um, but it's ultimately hurt by, of course, it's racism and sexism. Uh, if you want a an early view of what the West looked like, you might you might go with uh, Stuart Edward White. You might you might read this. It's you can you can find it online. I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, but I, I wouldn't say it's an essential read um, in any any sort of way. Um, it it just. It doesn't have that oomph. Um, I'm honestly surprised the, that the Coen brothers picked it for the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, but also it's it's fascinating how they they kind of ripped it apart and and um, and added some new elements in order to you know get rid of the racism and sexism and um, uh, you know tell a better story there. Although the racism is still there because the natives are presented as these savage monsters who are attacking uh, a wagon train, uh, but you can't really get rid of that because that's the the underlying essence of, of, of the story there um, but yeah if you, if you if you manage to find this online or you just want to read it do so below let me know what your thoughts are uh, but yeah again comment below if you have thoughts on that otherwise don't forget to like share and subscribe or possibly join the discord if you want to you know uh, spread awareness of, of this book and short story and this author um, or if you want to uh, you know just have a conversation about books in general on the discord but other than that I wish you the best of luck in your weird and old west travels farewell